Hello! Hello and welcome to Bricks TV, I'm Gavin. And I'm Anna, coming up on today's episode. Dripping with paint, we go in search of soak as we investigate the city's wave of graffiti. We have a report on the future of local TV with an exclusive interview with Jon Snow. And we look at the wave of break-ins to student properties, so make sure you stick around. But first, with the continuing cuts to public services, Oxfordshire County Council is trying to save £58 million in this year's budget alone. As part of this, it's looking to transfer 20 of the country's library, county's libraries even into the hands of the community. In real terms, that means nearly half of Oxfordshire's libraries are under threat of closure. And with Oxford receiving the worst key stage one results in the country, many people believe this cut of services is going to cause even more damage. Jamie Keane reports. With 20 of Oxfordshire's 43 libraries scheduled for closure, communities around the county have come together in protest. But are these cuts really necessary? And how will they affect Oxford's already struggling education system? The County Council suggests that the big society will be able to provide the services it cuts, but with seven of the 20 closures in Oxford, including Blackbird Lees, Littlemore and Headington, which serve some of the poorest areas in the county, questions are being raised over the number of willing and able volunteers. At the Friends of Berry Knoll Library meeting, Gemma Fowler, a teacher at Bayard Hill in Barton, read a letter written by her Year 5 pupils highlighting what the cuts meant to them. Yes. In school, our teachers set us homework projects linked to the topics we're studying. Many of us don't have books at home, and even fewer of us have the internet at home. And we use the library to do our research. I went to speak to Gemma to find out what had motivated the letter. To school, we were having a discussion about it, and they suggest they'd like to write another letter to the councillor saying, if this facility goes, we are going to be impacted. If learning is so important and reading is meant to be improving, then why is this being taken away from us? We're going to be the greatest affected. The Central Anti-Cuts meeting drew support from some of Oxford's well-known authors. What I personally hate about this bidding culture is that it sets one community, one group, yeah. one school yeah. against another. This is an old battle, uh, but it's um, uh, a new campaign, and um, you know, old war horses like me uh, just you know flare their nostrils and start to rear up when we hear these things. And good luck to you all. This is the difficulty of talking about this, right? You can't tell by looking at a class of children which one at this moment is ready for that particular book. Um, a good librarian will, because a good librarian will know the books and know the children. And that's why libraries aren't just the books on the shelves in a room, they're also the mind and the experience and the knowledge of the librarian who's in charge of them. If those things are cut, they're very, very difficult to replace. Elsewhere in the county, one of the threatened libraries will have a more direct effect on local schools. It's got to be remembered, while this is Langtry Secondary School's library as well as our public library, we have a primary school and two preschools uh, over on the same site, similar sites, and uh, they use the library weekly. I put some of these issues to Keith Mitchell, leader of Oxfordshire County Council. So why has the library service been put up for the proposed cuts? We've got to take £58 million out of our budget this year. We've exempted two areas only. One is the fire and rescue service, and the second one is um, safeguarding children, the baby Peter case. Apart from that, we felt we had to share the cost of the cuts right across the council. Do you feel that the big society option is a workable alternative? It has to be. It's the only option. We can't afford to run 43 libraries. So we have to look to communities to provide support where we can't. With Oxford's recent Key Stage 1 and GCSE results, do you feel that the closure of the library services is going to have a knock-on effect on education? This does worry me, and I'm particularly concerned that every single school we have has a library in it. And I want to understand why we can't improve the library service in the schools to make sure it provides recreational reading as well as educational reading. With the Council's hardline stance on the proposed cuts, it seems that the community's efforts may be in vain. However, with the mass protest on the 12th of February, and the Council's vote coming on the 15th. Only time will tell how this story will play out. I'm Jamie Keane for Brooks TV. Now for the last two years, Oxford Brooks hasn't even managed to get a team into University Challenge. Yeah. But this year, all that has changed. 
Not only have we got a team in the competition, but it's actually doing really well. Yes. The team has actually reached the quarterfinals, the latest victory against Christ College Cambridge, and that means they're now just two wins away from replacing the semi finals. Our reporter's been to speak to the team's coach to find out the secret of their success. Oxford Brooks is still going strong in University Challenge. Here, with some more insight, is their coach, Ian Bailey. I was excited just getting the team onto the programme. Uh, because for three years previously I had tried and failed to get a team on. The great thing is that once we go on we did so so amazingly well. Uh, the uh, second round match was the record score of a post-92 university and the record margin as well. I think it's really great to take the sort of university that doesn't normally appear on the University Challenge. Uh, Oxford Brooks is not like an Oxford College or a Cambridge College of the sort that that's go on all the time. And uh, show that our students are, some of them, just as good as students at other universities. So I'm really great that we were able to do that. And they provided the most uh, amazingly good answers, uh, especially in the second round performance. The sort of answers that I wouldn't have expected them. They just did. They just sort of exceeded the expectations, especially in that particular match. But but actually all the way through as well. I haven't been recognised myself because of course I wasn't on the show. But the people on the team have had lots of people stop them and congratulate them for doing so well. And it's really good that that this has happened to them. With a buzz being created around campus, we stopped a few students and asked them what they thought of the team's success. Um, to be honest, I've never really watched it, so I'm not really sure. I didn't know, um, but I did follow it on the book's website. They did quite well, didn't they? Yes. They came second. No? Did they? I have I no, idea. I have no idea. Uh, I think it's fantastic uh, that they've actually beaten Cambridge, because uh, most people think that Brooks maybe isn't full of as sharp a students as Cambridge, but I think this really sort of shows them up, which I think is excellent. Are you interested in the University Challenge? Here's what you need to know about the selection process. I wrote a quiz consisting of 100 questions divided into uh, 10 categories, and I sent round an email to all the students advertising auditions, both in Wheatley and in Headington, and I found the people with the top uh, four or five scores and they were on the team. I needed five people in total because there is a reserve but as well as a reserve the four people who are actually chosen. The team's one win away from the semi-finals. This is managed for Brooks TV. That's it for this half but as always remember that you can check out our website on brooks.ac.uk. Indeed and if you have any other stories to email us, then you can do so to the address of btv at books.ac.uk. So we will be back after the break when we'll have a report on the future of local TV with an exclusive interview with Jon Snow. And we have a look at Oxford's new addition to the future of electric cars. See you after the break. <laughs>